So in that on this morning, amen, uh, with the honor and the privilege to stand before the sacred desk, there is, as I would say, a word from the Lord and I don't plan to be before you long, but there's always, as I say in my home church, there's not just a revelation from the Lord, but there's illumination from him as well. I don't believe that the Lord gives us a word in the atmosphere without us being able to get to the depths of that word in order for us to have it illuminated or revealed for understanding so that we can do something with it. Amen. So for those of you that have the word of the Lord with you, if you would so kindly, please turn with me quickly to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And I want to look at verses 24 through 26. And once you have found it, please signify by honoring the word of the Lord by standing on your feet. Amen. Second Timothy chapter two. Verses 24 through 26. And the Bible reads as thus, and I'm reading to you all from the standard King James Version. It says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, mm -hmm. but be gentle unto all men, yes. apt to teach, uh -huh. patient, in the meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God pre-adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. If I had to give you a title as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord, it would be, uh, what does it mean to divinely serve? What does it mean to divinely serve? Amen. Good morning once again, church, and I pray that even as we have grace the scriptures of the Lord God this is something that's a right now word I'm believing not only for those who have been affirmed and consecrated and ordained on yesterday but those who shall be on today those who may already have and yet those who still have not discovered their assignment in the Lord that says there is a day that comes that you have an affirmation or a confirmation or a consecration that comes on your life but in that I have to speak in woman of God I have to keep this direct to the house because this is something I believe that many in the body of Christ may not know what their function is when it comes to being a servant. Right. I'm going to try and clarify this as we used to say, conjunction, junction, what's your function? I want to make sure that each and every one in the clarity of the word of the Lord has an understanding so that you are not discombobulated in what you have been called to do. For those that were with us on yesterday, I believe I dropped the revelatory note nugget to some folks because I had to declare in the midst of people's hearing in this hour when it comes to your assignment in the body of Christ, it's not about who you are, it's what you are. And when I understand that it's a what not a who it begins to speak right now man of God to my character that I have to walk in because see if I can be uh, really prophetic not pathetic it's about what you are that gives you access to eternity so now in that though the Lord had me rest this morning on this thing about the servant Come on, amen and so y'all know sometimes I have to go see what false prophet Webster has has to say about the definition of a word. Okay, some that may not know back in my church, I, I always emphasize that some people have let 
Prophet Webster be the author, founder, and finisher of their faith because unfortunately kingdom people have the audacity to go to the dictionary to try to define God in anything and everything, but yet we never go back to see if Webster was in God when the definitions were being written. I hope I'm helping somebody. So I, I have to be astute to going back to say, let me get to the foundation of the core as to when the Holy Spirit gave the annunciation to the prophets or the annunciation to the apostles to see what was the meaning then in order to impact the believer now. So in that, as I went to look up, I said, let me see what Webster has to say in the definition of a servant. I looked it up and the definition was a person who performs duties for others, especially a person employed in a house on domestic duties or as a personal attendant. Now I rested with that and I said, okay, that gives us a little bit, but based on what the writer gave us in the New Testament, here in verse 24, I looked at the word servant out of the Greek, amen, and the Greek word for servant is doulos. Now, what's interesting, when you look at the word doulos out of the Greek dialect, it means to be a slave. And it means to be a bond man. Now, as I say that, let me clarify to help somebody out. When the Bible is talking about you being a bond man, or a bond woman, it's really implying that you're employed. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Some are struggling, woman of God, because they think when it comes to being a servant unto the Lord, you have to wrestle with, are you going to be a slave in what you're serving to do? Some are wrestling with servant because their interpretation in the church is that a servant is one who does a specific function that they've been asked to do. Okay, that's a one-time hit it. A, a, a one-time moment and you say, I served. But let me once again bring clarity to you because this will hopefully give somebody a revelation on how to move forward. If you're going to claim that you're a servant of the Lord, it means that you've been employed as your profession. If I'm employed in this as my profession, then the servant means that it is my lifestyle that I live so that nothing causes me to be unemployed. I, see, kingdom people have to understand. There's some folks that's looking for jobs, but the Lord God said you already had a job that was already efficient to your eternal status. It's just some people are not doing the job that they've been called to do because they don't see kingdom work as a job. They only see it as something that they do in the moment versus their lifestyle. Am I helping somebody? See, man of God, I believe that's why the Bible says here, the servant of the Lord must not strive. Some people that may be some English or grammar majors, you kind of looking at the structure of the verse and saying, well, why would it say these things after being a servant? But now we have an aha moment when Paul is articulating this because there's some things that we get in our flesh when it comes to serving. See, the Bible says you cannot strive. And in that, what it's referring to is fighting or disputing. Once I've been given the assignment to be a servant of the Lord, how dare I have the audacity that I want to fight and quarrel with the assignment that I got on my life. While everybody trying to get titles, how about be a good servant and not war with doing the standard or minimum job that you're supposed to do for the body of Christ? Uh, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get out of here. The Bible not only says 
for us not to strive. It says, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. See, in this, when it comes to you as a believer, when you have really convicted yourself to being a true servant, not a fake one. When you convicted yourself to being a true servant unto the Lord, then the Bible says not only not to strive, not only not to quarrel, not only not to war, but it says to be gentle unto all men. Because watch this, when it comes to what you do in your character, that is what talks to people greater than E.F. Hutton. Uh, when people watch what you do and what you represent, sometimes how you do that as a servant speaks to people in the nonverbs. So that means I got to watch and be careful that if I'm going to serve, my servitude is consistent with my actions and how I carry myself so that I'm not fake with the love of the Lord God that I'm trying to tell everybody else that I represent. Because the reality of the matter is the verse says I have to be apt to teach. And see, let me let me kill a falsehood. Some people think teaching is regurgitating information. That's incorrect when it comes to the body of Christ. The word teacher means one who gives information with demonstration. So that means I cannot articulate something that I don't demonstrate or have a lifestyle that can be replicated for those that are watching what's coming out of my mouth. Oh, that may be an ouch. Let me, let me stand back. Go ahead, sir. But I have to have this incomplete understanding for the life that I live. Let me go a little bit further. Amen. Time is still getting away. But I have to understand there's characteristics to being a servant. And I think, woman of God, that's where some people miss it in the body of Christ. Once again, because as we have thought, okay, if you ask me to do something, this is me serving versus it being the character that I live by because servitude, the Lord God don't want you to get in your flesh because your job title can change. Just because I'm an archbishop today doesn't mean I can't be a bathroom cleaner tomorrow. Just because I have an apostolic anointing on my life don't mean that I can't clean my house, somebody else's house. I can't help somebody at Walmart that's got a flat tire. Let me be real. I, 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 I have to understand that my servitude is being the example of the Lord God in every aspect of my life. And I don't turn it on like a light switch that I'm only a servant when I'm in the church. Okay. So then the Bible says here in verse 25, and I'm moving on and moving on. The Bible says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. The Bible says, in meekness, to imply humility. Why does it say in meekness or in humility, Bishop, other than the fact that we have to understand there's two elements of pride that exist. Uh, uh, This may be deep for the church. There's two elements of pride. Many of us always talk about the negative pride, which is pride of arrogance. But according to the Bible, there's another form of pride called the pride of excellence. And in order to be in the pride known as excellence, Its foundation characteristic is humility. Its basic characteristic is meekness. So what the Bible really says is if you're going to be a servant, there is an air of pride that's authorized on your life. But it should be the pride of humility that births excellence in the atmosphere. Because without the spirit of excellence, Mm -hmm. 
and see the spirit of excellence has only yoked itself to the characteristic of the presence of the Lord God. Not the excellence that man deems according to man's definition, but according to what the word of the Lord has deemed as excellent unto him. So if that be the case, he says, this is what needs to be birthed in the atmosphere by those who are real servants because some people are still worn with themselves. Some people are still opposing themselves. Some people are still having issues with themselves. Some people are psychotic with themselves. Some people still need treatment for themselves. Some people are discombobulated with themselves. Somebody probably said, ouch, right there. It's, it's all right, you ain't get up. You, you know, we, we ain't trying to dime you out this morning. Because the fact of the matter is all of us war with this. Even Jacob warred with what was wrong with himself. And see, the thing is, though, it's when you wrestle with that version of yourself that the Lord God says, finally, you will get in the battle that you need to deal with. Sometimes it ain't your demons, it's you. Sometimes you got to wrestle and fight with yourself and get and get your hip knocked or disjointed so that the Lord can rename you in Israel, which means who the Lord has prevailed with. Some ain't had they prevailing moment, prophet, because they ain't fought with who they got in themselves that's causing them to war with being the servant that they've been called to be. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let me. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. The Bible says, if God pre adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Let me take this deep word that some are wrestling with. That word pre-adventure is the Greek word mepote. And mepote means in the least or whether or not. Uh, let me substitute it back in. It says, if God, whether or not, or in the least, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So now, what the Bible is trying to help us to get it's when we're real servants unto the Lord that we can have understanding exposed to us. See, sometimes people are not getting to understand. The Bible says in all that getting, get understanding. But you can't get spiritual understanding if you're not a spiritual person because you have not been employed to spiritual things. So until I get employed in doing spiritual things, now I can get understanding about the spiritual things I'm employed to do. So now that I've been employed in spiritual things, the Bible says that the Lord will give me understanding. But yet in the understanding, now I validate him allowing my repentance to work. See, right now, some people think, Man of God, that they've been repenting. I, I was ministering in a conference this week and I happened to touch on the word repentance and I had to give some people some revelation because some people think telling God you sorry, you good. No, 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 no. Really, you actually practicing witchcraft on yourself because you said, I'm sorry. You are already putting a negative curse on your life because the world has conditioned you to say your apology or your repentance is based on you saying the word sorry to somebody else. But yet the person who you told them you're sorry, all they've done is confirmed that you are now putting the curse on your life. Let me help you out. I have to understand in this season. It's not about me being sorry. It's about me being repentant. But here's the thing. If I'm going to repent, 
uh, you got to understand, I don't know if I got some map readers here. Some folks is tied to GPS, but that's all good. If I'm at point A and I need to go to point B, what happens is I usually use the straightest line to get from one point to the next. But sometimes when I begin to start my journey, there's something that becomes a distractor. There's something that pulls me off the course. And then the next thing I know, I stomp and say, how did I get here? Yeah. Uh, I know I'm talking to somebody. While I'm sitting there, Apostle, saying, how did I get here? Some of us like to use Kentucky windage. We try to do this and correct from being in the incorrect position because we don't want to waste time of going back and getting it right. But repentance requires me to do a 180, go back and find the last point that I was correct to pick up the straight line to the destination. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The Lord only authorizes you this version of repentance because he says, if you take the time to go back and examine what pulled you off in order to get back to the point, I recognize that version of repentance in me. And this is when I bless you because your life has been placed in order based upon the root of my word, not what man has told you to continue to walk in an incorrect assignment. I got to get out of here. Let, let me... Let me... Let me... Let me... Let me rally this up. Let me... Okay. Verse 26. <laughs> Amen. Verse 26. The Bible says, and that they may recover themselves. <laughs> oh, somebody missed that. <laughs> Folks often come to church and want somebody else to recover you. But the Bible says that they can recover themselves. I want you to be able to help you help you. Okay. Now the Bible, I don't want to lose nobody. I don't want y'all to get lost. But if I'm going to recover... The Greek word that's used here is ananepho. And it means to regain mm -hmm. or to return to sobriety. Let me help you. So what that implies is as long as I'm not in a repentant state as a servant I am under the influence or drunk with something else see when it comes to witchcraft witchcraft is operating in psychic commands didn't Samuel says disobedience is being under witchcraft. So there's psychic commands that are a drug to the individual, especially one who is not spiritual. Ones who find themselves that are lacking with the spirit of the word being the right ingredient or the right medication in order to keep you healthy and strong in the Lord, then that means you're going to the wrong drugstore and you're allowing some things and some witches and some warlocks and some unrighteous medications to cause you to be drunk. And when you're under the influence, sometimes you get so toxic that you can't get back in the right place or the right realm. But the word of the Lord says, if I am a repentant person, then what happened, repentance apparently must be a drug that wakes you up out of what you drunk with. Uh, uh,
Because see, what the Bible says, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Let me help you steal. Let me help you steal. When it comes to the snare, it's not just a trap. It's a noose. When you look at the snare, whether we talk in Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic, from whatever dialect that you look at anciently, it doesn't mean, it, it is a trap, but what I'm trying to emphasize to you is the type of trap that it is. A noose is something that's hung around the neck of an individual in order to separate the life of the head from the body. The adversary, when dealing with you, unless there is a tragic event that takes your physical life, the adversary is always setting nooses in your life because the adversary don't want you to have a head in your life. He doesn't want you to have a head. Leaders, you have to think about this right now. One of the greatest things that the adversary can do against you to get you out of the will of God and out of serving, out of having the mindset to serve, is to decapitate you. How many of us are sitting now, we've been decapitated and didn't even know? To see those who are not employed as servants and like their employment, yes. the adversary is happy for you being dead in your cerebral. See, if you're going to be dead in your cerebral, let it at least be at the sake of Christ. Because see, there is a death that has to occur. In your cerebral, but we don't want your death to occur based upon the adversary being the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, all of us have to, if we're going to emulate the life of Christ, there's a death that we have to have in advance of our physical death. That's right. Okay. Y'all, y'all. Can I, can I give you a sidebar revelation? Let, 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 grab this, grab this. Jesus died at Golgotha. Golgotha in the Greek means the place of the skull. But listen, when he was in Gethsemane, he died in his skull before he went to the physical place of the skull. That's where he died. But the thing is, he submitted himself to that death. The adversary is not giving you the opportunity, especially if you're claiming to be a servant, to submit yourself to have a death for Christ. He's giving you a death from the spirit. Okay. So once again, the Bible says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. And everything in the Bible that references the devil is not necessarily that you are being possessed by demonic spirits. Because the word devil is diabolos in the Greek, but it means the Prone to slander. Prone to accuse falsely. And once again, sometimes you're your own devil because you are not doing your job of being the servant. You have slandered your character. You have slandered and made yourself false. You have allowed yourself to have accusation against you because you ain't on your job. 
can't nobody accuse you if you're at work. That's right. Oh, oh yep, y'all missed that. <laughs> Everybody accuses you when you're not at work. But if I'm at work because my job is to be the servant of the Lord, then I limit false accusations because my lifestyle is replicating the truth. And now I no longer live according to the will of the adversary. I live according to the will of the Lord. And now that I live according to the will of the Lord, I've earned my pay. I've earned my pay. Why do I say I've earned my pay? Closing this up, but in the Gospels, as well as in the book of Revelation, the word speaks of a reward. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm. That's right. Have y'all ever paid close attention to that? Mm-hmm. I know some looking at me deep right now, huh? What? <laughs> reward? What? Yes. Let me, let me clarify. There's a such thing as a reward and, and there's a such thing as an award. What is the difference? An award is something you receive for a specific event or action that you performed. That people want to give you recognition in the moment. A reward <laughs> is pay due to employment. The Bible says greater is your reward, not award, your reward in heaven. I have to be on payroll. To be authorized to get a reward. So the only way that I can get paid to get there is that I'm doing my job as a servant here. I don't know if I helped somebody right there. I got to get on payroll, Apostle, now so that when I get there, I can get my due reward. Oh, Jesus. Lord to God. Thank you, We praise Him, we praise Him, we praise Him. I'm going to leave that right there. Oh. Preacher, get out the way. But we have to understand in this season, I'm praying that this has been a word to help somebody, especially for kingdom leaders and those who are looking to be future kingdom leaders of the Lord, that you do not devalue yourself and be feeling some kind of way because of the service you've been asked to do. In correlation to the service you desire to do. Because the Lord is looking at you in another light. Based on the countenance of your heart. Of you wanting to serve in the spirit of excellence for the Lord. And you have to remember and understand, my service is not to the church. My service is to the Lord God through the church. My service is me being in right standing with him regardless of what job he gives me to do for the body of Christ because what I'm doing is laying up the treasures of the word in heaven for myself because I've got my own value in him beyond what everybody else and the devil is a lie if folks are continuing to discredit you for the level of work that you do in the body of Christ Christ, uh, the thing
king of accountability is your employer. The Lord God, the last time I looked from Genesis to Revelations, is the employer who set the standard of what real work in the kingdom is like. Amen. So we bless him. We bless him. I digress. I ain't at home, but I digress. I'm at the distant home, but I give it back to you, Apostle. I give it back, woman of God. But hey, amen. If there's those, let me say, that want to give your life to Christ at this moment. If there's those who are saying to themselves, hey, I want to be a servant of the Lord. Let me make this personal. If there are those that say, I want to be a real servant of the Lord, regardless of how everybody else has looked at me, whosoever will, let them come. See, the church is here in order to give the application, if I may say, so you can get on payroll. But sometimes you've got to understand that I've got to take the step to go to the employment office and fill out their application and not have any shame because there were some things in my history that the world would not hire me for. Y'all y'all better listen to me. The kingdom application, it aborts everything that's in your past. But woman of God, the kingdom application does say, if you will write your present, I speak into your future. If you just come and do the application. See, there's some folks deep that may be broke in their heart right now, but right now, we don't care about that. We want you to be employed. We want you to get what you deserve. We want you to get interest. We want you to be the investment that the Lord already saw you, but whosoever will, let them come. If there's individuals that say, well, Lord, I, I, I'm already on payroll, but, but I kind of was skipping work. I done backslid. I was in some condition that I stopped doing my assignment as a servant whosoever will let them come because the Lord says I'm going to readjust what your job is today I'm going to reset you uh, that your payment is established whosoever will let them come whosoever will let them come whosoever will let them come we we extend this opportunity. All we can be is vessels that represent him to give the extension. The Lord God is the only one who ushers his own church kingdom wise. But if you're as we used to say outside of the ark of safety, we say, come on, come on to the door. Come on to the door. The door is open right now. But we give you that opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. And if there are none. I do ask that you stand on your feet as we pray. Because there may be some right now that are still held up within themselves because they, they say, I, I don't want to get out there by myself. Uh, uh, and if there's anybody like that, we say, whosoever will, let them go. All you got to do is raise a hand and say, I need help to get there. But if not, if not, if not, whatever you got resting in your mind, that you thought was a disqualifier. I begin to say, put that to the front of your mind because even as Paul said, let a man examine himself. In the examination, we're about to rebuke that and erase it. We're in our prayer relationship with the Lord. We are going to speak, declare, prophesy, and decree. Everything that was your stains in your life are erased. I believe the Bible says his blood washes our sins whiter than snow. So we're believing on that. We're believing on that. For those that are with me, let us go before the throne of grace.
Gracious eternal Father, Lord, right now we bless you. We begin to declare, we begin to prophesy and decree. Lord God, right now, for those who want to be legitimate servants unto you in the body of Christ, but yet their life has caused them to be in a place that they were discombobulated, they failed from the job that you gave them, but Lord, right now, they repent and say, I want to be back in alignment with you. Right now, Lord God, we ask that your angelic hosts begin to wipe the script and move the sins that they have burdening their lives because your blood has already declared that it's washed them whiter than snow. Lord God, we let your power move this morning because there are those, Lord God, some that may have been warring with themselves of coming before you and letting your Holy Ghost move in their life. But Lord, by the power of the anointing that's in this place, we begin to declare victories like never before. Lord God, right now, we just begin to say thank you. We begin to say bless you, God. We begin to magnify you, Lord God. We begin to declare. We begin to lift holy hands, Lord. We begin to prostrate our spirit, Lord. We begin to give it all to you, Lord. And we do this in the majestic name of Christ. Then they all said, Amen. 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 And so it is. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Yeah.